How you doing? Hello. Great. How's everybody doing? Good. Good. Josh Gaddis said yesterday that Charbonnet is really pushing the envelope forward lately. Has he separated himself at all? Uh, he's he's done really good. He's he's practicing really well, and and uh, you know, all those guys are playing at a high level. So. We'll see as the season goes on if anyone really separates himself uh, in the way that you're looking for me to say. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jim was saying the other week that he's coming on like a freight train. In your eyes, what does that look like to you? Uh, a freight train or the... He's coming on the like freight train, yeah. <laughs> you, you coach he, him after all. He, he is uh, just really relentlessly uh, consistent with his approach. Like every single day, he's really eager to do well. He's coachable. Uh, he likes to practice. He... he you know, he wants reps, he wants to play special teams, and, and uh, very rarely does he make a mistake and not correct it. And it's very rare for him to repeat mistakes. So when you do that and you get like between like 220 to 275 like team reps in, in a camp, you're gonna get pretty good if, if you know, every time you screw something up, it, it gets improved. And that's, that's really kind of been his hallmark so far. Where's he relative to other true freshmen you've coached? Uh, in a, in a pretty good place. Not, I don't know if to compare everybody, but he's he's a he's very special in a lot of ways. Not just like running back ability, but just in terms of the intangibles and everything. He's uh, he's uh, you know more mature than most incoming freshmen at at any position. Gee, where's that competition at right now? Do you have a number one back? Uh, we'll see. Uh, come game time. So that means you do. You're just not telling us, or uh, it's it's really a bunch of guys that are all. Practicing at a really high level, and uh, you know we'll see how everybody practices today and tomorrow. So with Zach, how do you you know work with a guy that he spent all of the spring injured? How do you get him up to speed? It, it's kind of weird. Like a guy like that, it's not that difficult because mm -hmm. of the fact that like when he was out, he was really mentally engaged uh, and, and unusually mentally engaged, more so than most guys are. He he took great notes. He asked a ton of questions. And uh, like, even from you know April, May, you know, he hadn't, hadn't been in the system very long. Neither had anybody else. He was, you know, at about the same level, just knowledge-wise, as everybody, uh, which just speaks a lot to how how much he loves the game and how engaged he was able to stay, even though he wasn't physically yeah. out there in the field. And is his injury still bothering him at all, or oh, no? Good. No, he's he's uh, he's healthy now. Nico, when he was out here a couple of weeks ago, said he was when he was out, he was like drawing up the plays on a whiteboard. Was it similar with you and Zach when he was out, or what were you, what sort of like specific things were you doing to keep him engaged? So the great thing about Zach is like you don't ever need to ask him to do anything. He, he's always eager to to do more and ask questions, and and uh, he's always like trying to find more stuff to do. Uh, but it is some of the same stuff, you know, drawing stuff on a whiteboard or uh, like texting you at one in the morning some question about something that happened in practice that he wasn't even in uh, and that kind of stuff which which is pretty commonplace amongst our players they love they love the mental side of it and understand that like if they can grow in that regard it's going to benefit them uh, you know in the in the uh, on the field how deep of a rotation in your mind has been earned at this point like how many guys do I anticipate playing kind of thing you, that you feel would feel comfortable with yeah uh, five guys really uh, you know, with, with uh, True and, and Christian and Zach, and then Ben Van Sumeren and Hassan Haskins have both been really good. Uh, and those are names that, you know, nobody really is aware of or thinks about, guys that came over from defense and uh, are talented guys and have really practiced really well. Hey, Christian had such a good close for you guys last season, so much was coming around and then got dinged up in the spring. Is he, is he back to where maybe you guys anticipated he would be? Right now. Yeah, Christian is healthy now, and uh, he's he's just continues to get better. Obviously, sometimes it's hard to like to make those improvements when you're not on the field, like you're alluding to. And and uh, he's been getting a lot better this camp. And I think like all of us, and especially Christian, are just excited to get out there and, and really turn some heads and, and show everybody what he can do. It's a former walk-on. Sometimes it seems like outside of this building, Trey Wilson gets kind of overlooked. Why is that short-sighted? Uh. You know, like, why is that the, the case? Like, no, why is that or? a short-sighted that people, like, overlook true, like, what does he bring to the position and why why is he maybe a bit better than just, you know, A, it's a walk-on that got to play. Yeah, uh, you know, probably because people really like big-name, you know, high-star guys. Mm -hmm. And that's the nature of, like, 
being a fan and stuff, and you know, people like the guys that are like sexier in that regard. They're they're more fun to talk about and more fun to anticipate playing and all that. And True's a great example of a guy who just like really doesn't care much about it and just continues to work day in and day out and has continued to get better and better and and uh, really has developed himself into a really good football player. So uh, I'm not quite sure the answer to that, but uh, it's just. You know, people like the bigger names, I guess. So you, with your running back room losing its two more most experienced players in Karan and Chris, how have kind of the others kind of stepped up? You know, as leaders or like to gel together, kind of. Mm -hmm. It's a great question. The, uh, you know, the guys that we have, like they haven't played a ton. Um, you know, True's played a lot, but like in the grand scheme of things, really not that much. And so, the interesting thing is like they're inexperienced, but they're super, super mature. And if you watch those guys, the way that they go through a meeting and the way they go through a walkthrough and practice, it's really impressive. There's very little nonsense. They, uh, they really support each other. Uh, they root for each other. They help each other. And then they compete like crazy to outdo each other and do better than each other. So uh, they've made it really easy on me and, and, uh, and really just kind of set a tone of like just constant improvement. And, and uh, I think they're really going to surprise a lot of people. How much does experience matter for what you I think it, it, it's helpful. I mean, there's certain things that you just, you know, you don't really know until you go through them with anything in life. Uh, the great thing about what, the way we practice is we do a lot of team stuff of our defense versus our offense, and our defense is really good. And they do a lot of stuff that's a little unconventional. So, you know, by getting hundreds of team reps, uh, you know, each one of these guys has played more this fall camp than they'll play in the season, just in terms of, you know, exposure to 11 on 11 football. So. Doing that against our defense in a competitive environment, you're gonna, you know, naturally learn a lot, and and uh, uh, I really believe that they'll be ready to play because of those experiences in, in fall camp and spring. What is that? Is, what is having five guys back there that you trust allow the offense to do that maybe uh, when in case you only have two or three guys that you trust? Uh, that's a good question. I think being able to play multiple guys at once uh, is, is one thing. You know, obviously you got to have guys that are good enough to, to warrant doing that. So uh, it allows you to put multiple guys on the field at once. And then it also just lets you survive a season because it's hard to keep a guy healthy, one or two guys healthy for, for you know, 13 games. It's, it's pretty tough. So you really got to have uh, three, four, five guys that are, that are legitimate contributors for you to make it through a, a, a season. And, and we believe we have that. Yeah, you guys talking for from running back in, in this system? Are there certain skills or a certain running style that really fits what Josh does on offense? Yeah, that's it's an interesting question. Uh, you know, being being able to make plays is, is the big thing because the nature of the offense, you're 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 presented. Everyone likes talking about like space and speed and space. Like as a running back, we have more space to work with now because the 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 box is there's going to be less people in the box typically when we when we're running the ball. So uh, just being tough to tackle is probably the main thing because you're going to get more opportunities where there's one guy that's going to make this either a six yard gain or a 15, 20, 30 yard gain, and, and being able to win that battle is a huge thing. So if I had to say one thing, I would put it uh, right there. Are all, so, all you guys pretty equal in terms of that, or is there one guy who's really good at that? Uh, they're all good. They're all different though. Like like. Like true, true is much more likely to, to try to make a guy miss. CT is a more a, a guy who's more likely to set a guy up and outrun him. Uh, Zach is a little bit in between, and then Ben Van Sumeren and Hassan Haskins uh, are, are going to run you over. And uh, you know, it's nice having the, the variety there, and they're all you know effective methods. Gavis yeah, so has well, talked about. Guys, it, I apologize. Uh, we got time for one more question. We got a staff meeting. I said Gavis has talked about. It liking running backs that can catch the ball as well. How, how have you guys been doing in that respect? Uh, good. We had a couple rough days in camp, like, you know, not catching the ball as consistent as we would want. But like I kind of mentioned before, the way our guys operate is like, hey, we're not catching the ball great. We had a couple drops or whatever. Well, you know, those guys are going to be on the jug machine catching balls after practice and before practice and, and uh, really working on, on those specific situations where those things came up and try to try to become reliable in that in that aspect. So. Uh, we're hoping that, that we can have some of the success that he's had in his past getting the ball to the running back. Cause there's, as you continue to stretch the ball down the field, there's a lot of space underneath for check downs and, and uh, can be a, a huge impact for us. Appreciate it, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.